this? Cam what? Cameras are just too stinking expensive. Every time we do a review in the comments, people are like, $1,500, who has that money? We did a review for $600 and people are like, $600, then I have to buy a lens. So we hear you. We want a defined budget option. Yeah, we set our price at $300 and tried to find the best possible cameras that we could. I think we did pretty good. My gear here was 1500 bucks new and I got it for $300 and I'm amazed by it. Yeah, I think I chose an even better option than Tony's. It's less than $300. It's compact, it's everything you could want in a camera, but we are gonna put them head to head to be sure. We got these from KEH. They sell used gear, but it comes with a return period and it comes with a warranty. So you can just get yesterday's brand new great camera with a little bit of usage on it and save yourself so much money and still get the same great quality pictures that you would get with one of the brand new cameras. Yeah, check out our links to KEH down below in the description. You can get 5% off when you use our coupon code or if you're selling or used gear there, you can get a 5% bonus. So thanks KEH and thanks to you guys for telling KEH we're doing a good job. Oh, what was that? I don't know. The camera I chose is the Sony RX100 Mark III. And in 2014, this camera was $800. It has 20 megapixels, so you get pretty good image resolution. And I chose this camera because it's super compact. I can fit it in my purse, which isn't very big. I can fit it in my pocket. And in fact, the past few days when we've been trying out our cameras, I've been taking mine way more places because I can just put it in my pocket and walk out the door. I love that it has the built-in lens. If you're on a budget and you're interested in a camera that's $300, I figure you probably don't want to invest in a bunch of glass that can be hundreds or even thousands of dollars. So this is a worry-free option. It's also telephoto, so you get a 24 to 70 range. That's pretty versatile. That means you can go wide angle or you can zoom in on smaller details. So I think that this is the camera you want to bring with you if you want to do a little bit of everything, but you don't want the hassle of bringing a huge setup. I picked a copy of the Canon 70D which was our main video camera for our YouTube channel for a couple of years. That's how awesome it is. Now, it's a little bit older now, but when it was new with this lens, it would have cost $1,500 and I got it for under $300. I expected it to be kind of beat up because you get better prices on the stuff that has scratches and stuff, but it's in like, like new condition. It came with a third party battery charger and it was missing the strap, which I had one of my own anyway. So maybe that's why I got such a good deal on it. I picked a Canon DSLR because it's an interchangeable lens system. So unlike Chelsea, who stuck with her one lens, I could get a super wide angle lens. I could get a fisheye lens or a macro lens, or I could get telephoto lenses, wildlife lenses. This is a system that can grow with me. And the Canon DSLR system is so, so good because they have just thousands and thousands of lenses available at KHUs that you can find for just great prices. So if you do think you're going to stick with photography as a hobby, this one can grow with you, while Chelsea's is always going to be the same because you can't change the lens. And I think that's going to make this a better camera for day-to-day -day shooting. For this type of shooting at normal focal lengths, I just don't see any difference between our pictures without getting into some kind of pixel peeping. And if I did pixel peep, little differences between the camera settings and the composition made a bigger difference than the technical differences in the camera. Even though these two cameras are older, we shot raw, and that allowed us to use modern post-processing tools to reduce the noise, to improve the resolution of the images, and really get more out of these cameras than they were originally designed to do. For faraway subjects, it's no contest. Chelsea's compact only goes to a 35 millimeter equivalent of 70 millimeters, whereas mine goes to 135 millimeters. So as we zoom in on this boat, my image is sharper and cleaner. I do like the focal length that you chose for your lens. And I do think it's pretty cool that you can grow into this camera by adding stuff. But I still think that I won these rounds because you have not been taking your camera everywhere and I have. And it's for one big reason. 
Look at the size of yours. I know. If, well, if we go out to dinner, like you just put your camera in my in your purse, but and I need to like put this on the table, and then there's no room for me to eat. Or it's just a, it's a little it's a little big for travel. So I'll admit that you have that, but I want to take some pictures of each other, of the important things in life, not some random flowers, Chelsea. And I'm not taking pictures of flowers. Let's do a portrait shootout right now because I don't like where this is going. I don't like how you're talking. No, you're not going to like the results either because I'm going to win. Here's some tips for taking really nice portraits, even with a kit lens. Zoom in to the long end of it and use aperture priority to select the lowest possible f-stop number. The telephoto zoom is going to compress the facial features, making the forehead and the nose not overly exaggerated like they would be on a smartphone camera. And the lower f-stop number is going to blur the background really nice, creating subject separation, making a really pro portrait, something Chelsea can't do with her little compact. Let's take a look. And my 70D even has face detect, making it really easy to focus and expose for her face. Mine does too. The only problem I have is the face detect only works when I'm using the rear screen. When I switch to the viewfinder here, it's a totally different experience. It's an optical viewfinder, so it's not what you see is what you get. It's kind of like two separate cameras, like the rear viewfinder, modern mirrorless camera, the optical viewfinder, old school SLR. I'm gonna have Tony sit in the same spot and take portraits of him. And huh, he doesn't know this, but I have a cool little aperture ring so I can go down to F18 and get some portraits of him. I'm gonna put my exposure compensation up and mine's a mirrorless camera. So what I see on the back of the camera is what I get as the end result. So I can look and see that a stop of exposure compensation is good. Mine also has face detect. Tony, could you please give me some looks? Stop trying to throw this competition. Come on. Sexier. Sex sells. As sexy as it gets. <laughs> yeah. Oh, too sexy. <laughs> too sexy. This is a YouTube video. For portraits, I wisely chose the better model and thus my picture would look better anyway but you can see that there is more background blur out of my more telephoto lens. Nonetheless, Chelsea's little compact did a pretty good job of blurring out the background. Plus the fact that we were in shadow and the background is bright created some additional subject separation. We were in shadow and these images are a little grainy, but let's see what we can do with modern post-processing. Now, as I zoom in, the images are nice and clean and yet still sharp because modern post-processing, even with these older cameras, can produce great results. My battery's almost dead because I actually use my camera. That's not why your battery is dead. Look look at your battery. Look, first, look at my battery. And now look at your battery. Okay, do you need tweezers? This is Chelsea's battery and this is my battery. Good things come in small packages. You know what the 70D is really good for is video. So let's see how they work for video creators. Would you stick with your same choice? Yeah, I made the right choice. No, I'm serious. Stop bull****. I know you don't like that. <laughs> I love this camera. It's fantastic. I can't believe this. You don't even bring it anywhere. I, I just, it's a serious camera, okay? It's not for fun. This thing doesn't work. <laughs> so you're not having fun. I am having fun. Okay, not enough fun to bring your camera anywhere. <laughs> now I'm taking video with your camera. I must look so much better. Both these cameras do 1080 at 30 frames per second. And now the standard is 4K dot. It looks like you made that noise because you kept your mouth open. <laughs> yeah, you're just a bunch of hot air, aren't you? 4K is the standard for cameras nowadays, but the fact is nowadays we don't need 4K because most people consume video on their phones. We actually use smaller screens. I, I personally think 1080 is just fine for most people. Like the truth is I think both of our cameras are very good, but they're for two different people. If you wanna take pictures easily, take your camera everywhere, and you're not looking to buy a bunch of more lenses and things like that, this is a really good camera. I'm actually amazed at what a modern mirrorless camera it is, despite the fact that it was less than $300. Like you really do get most of the modern features. And this camera, I'm impressed with it. Like this is, I would consider this 
just about a working professional camera. And in fact, it was a professional camera for us for many years. The price has come down so much that this is definitely a better starter camera than most of the entry-level modern cameras. If you don't have an unlimited budget, which who does? Like you're just trying out photography. You Maybe you won't love it. Maybe you will. I think that even if you are serious about photography, you don't have to buy the latest and the greatest gear to get great results. We love to review new gear. It's fun. Doesn't mean you have to buy everything brand new. So go to KEH and check out their used inventory because not only do they have a huge selection of all different kinds of news gear from film cameras to medium format to newer mirrorless, things that are just almost brand new, they have there too. But also, they have an incredible return period where if you don't like your camera for any reason, you can return it within a certain amount of days and they also have a warranty if anything goes wrong. You can get 5% off by using our coupon code in the description or if you're selling your old gear to them, you can get a 5% bonus with our coupon code. So check them out and thank you KEH. I also like that if you try it and you use it for a year and you decide later you want to upgrade to something modern, you can sell it back to them and you'll get a good chunk of money back and you could even apply that to more gear at KEA. So it's just a good way to stay current on your gear without losing everything you've invested. In the comments down below, I'd love to hear what you think of our $300 cameras. Is it still too expensive? Must we go lower? I don't think we could go any lower than $300. Your lens was $30. I think we could find a less expensive option. No way. This is a lot for what you got. Oh, and we just picked two examples of compact and DSLR cameras at that price point. But if you look at the description, we'll have links to a bunch of other very similar cameras that provide similar values because there might not be an unlimited supply of these at KEH. If you do find what you're looking for there, buy it right away because somebody else will buy it. I've had that happen a couple of times. Don't forget to subscribe for more reviews like this one. If there's something you'd like to see us make, tell us about it in the comments below. Thanks. Bye.